To better communicate our designs, we need to control the line weights, colors, and line styles of our objects. To do this, we can leverage the visibility graphic settings to control the way items are displayed in a particular view. To get to these settings, you can either type the letter V, like visibility, twice on your keyboard while you're inside of your view. So you can just type V, V to bring up the visibility graphics overrides dialog box. Or the other option that you would have is underneath properties over here on the left hand side, you could have just clicked on the big gray edit button right here next to visibility graphics to also bring this dialog box up. Now, this dialog box shows all the properties of the way that this view is going to be displayed, such as whether or not certain items should be on or off. For example, if we take a look here, in our current view, we have a lot of structural columns showing up. If we decided to shut our structural columns off by moving over here to structural columns where the checkbox was, clearing it out, we could then click on OK, and you'll notice how all the columns ended up vanishing off of the screen. If we would click VV again on the keyboard, we could then turn them back on again by just coming over here to the box, selecting where structural columns is at. And I could click on OK, but in this case, I'm just going to click on Apply. And we can move this box over by clicking on the top of this dialog box, holding your left mouse button down, and just dragging the box over. And you can see that we've just got all of our structural columns back. Now, we didn't actually lose our structural columns. We just shut them off so that you can no longer see them in this particular view. And you could do this with any of the objects inside of our model. So this dialog box here with visibility graphics overrides, the keyboard being here being override, will override the properties of the way a view would typically be displayed. Now, those typical view properties as far as how it should be displayed are controlled from a different location, which is this box down here called object styles. So if you click on the little button here for object styles, it'll bring up the object styles dialog box. The Object Styles dialog box has quite a bit of information inside of it. It includes all the different kinds of Revit families and objects which are currently loaded into your project. It also has information related to how the line weights of these things should display. So when it comes time to print, whether or not the line should be thick or thin, as well as the color of the lines. The line pattern. Is it a hidden line? Is it a dash line? Is it a center line? Your standard drafting symbology. There's also some options here for material. For the most part, you'll tend to leave that information alone. But if that is set, then you can universally throughout the project change the way the materials display on that kind of object in each and every view. And really, that's what the Object Styles dialog box is all about. Changing the properties of whether it be a modeled object. I'm going to click on annotation objects here. Whether or not it's going to be dimensions. The analytical model, that's the structural forces leading through your structure that you've been creating. Or even such things as imported objects. Let's say you bring in a CAD file from another software program like AutoCAD or MicroStation. You just decide to bring it in. You could then adjust those properties from inside of the dialog box. So I'm going to go ahead and click back on model objects right here. One other thing to know is that you can also adjust it so whether or not you're seeing it in a projection view or in a cut view, you can get different kinds of line weights for that type of object. For instance, in a typical plan view, which is what a projection view would kind of be, because anything that would be in the distance, like in this case, a staircase, would end up being having a, your staircase being a fairly light line weight. And one is pretty much the lightest line weight that you can have. On the other hand, if you're cutting through that staircase, you want to see nice darker lines where each of the stair treads were located at. So you know, this is a stair tread and I'm cutting through it. Because there's different line weights associated with it and you want it to display as different line weights, you have the option between using different line weights here in Revit. And here we have a choice between a line weight number one, which is the lightest, all the way down to a line weight 16, which would be the heaviest. I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually use a line weight 16 before, but it is available to you. And uh, you can see you have the same options here. Just click inside of the box, click the little arrow if you need to, and then sort of pull this down in order to be able to select whatever line weight you need to off of the list. If you wanted these, the stairs, for instance, to be black or be a different color, you could just select on the color you'd want it to be, and it would automatically change that object to reflect those properties. Now I'm going to go ahead and just leave everything the way that it was. So I'm just going to hit cancel on out through that dialog box. 
But the important thing to remember about these visibility graphics is that visibility graphics control the way different views and different items are displayed within those views. This is important because the way it displays on screen affects design communication and ultimately in Revit will also affect the way that it prints from Revit structure.